the big blue blob might just be getting overshadowed by the big gray blob. That looks gray to me. I'm gray. Finally, we're back in the world of EU4, and Germany's reformed about 500 years earlier. I say about, it's technically like 427 years earlier, but that doesn't sound as good. Either way, I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll all be saying, now this is epic. I don't know why Germany was just given its modern day borders though. It seems a little bit weird, but again, this is EU4, so things are gonna change fairly quickly. As well as yes, for some reason, the HRE is still here. I just have no idea how it's gonna work now. I guess it's just gonna function the same way. At least that's what it looks like. All right, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Either way, it's EU4, so I'm hoping for a nice, massive, dramatic North America. Even though they're technically still not in the best position to colonize, I think they'll get something. Initially at the start here, we've got a German kingdom that has rivaled Austria, Burgundy, and Denmark. Makes sense. They also look like they might be starting off with a slight advantage. Uh, they, they seem a little bit bigger than their Western neighbors. Ideally here, I'm just really hoping we are going to see those big, sexy German borders from World War I. Damn, it's so beautiful. I, I doubt it, but we can dream. Anyways, we're off to a fast start. We're going to the end of the game, as always, all the way up to 1821. So let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. It's 1495, and uh, not much has changed. The borders still seem somewhat similar. I mean, of course, England's getting kicked out of continental Europe. Nothing new there. And Iberia has also been taken back. I guess Portugal is doing most of the work there. They also got all this territory down this way too. I wonder if this thing's even gonna last. Like, will the HRE still exist just 100 years into the future? Maybe, but just barely though. And interestingly, I, I guess with Portugal being so aggressive, Castile got to South America first. Most Americans think that Brazil is Spanish anyways, so they're not gonna notice. Ah oh, yes, Germany, I, I like what I see. Very nice. Keep it coming. I probably should have checked this at the start, uh, but either way, 75 years into the game, and Germany is uh, second. The world's second greatest power. And they've got a pretty good lead over France. The big blue blob might just be getting overshadowed by the big gray blob. That looks gray to me. I'm gray. And as you probably saw, Ming, of course, was number one on that list. Uh, they'll probably slowly lose power as time goes by, they're, they're not going to explode anymore, though. Lots of wars happening in Eastern Europe right now. Lithuania's getting taken over. Muscovy. Uh, Denmark also just... Oh, there, there goes something. I was going to say Denmark also just annexed Norway. The Swedes, by the way, still don't have their freedom. And at this point, it's, it's not looking too good. I do realize it's probably going to take the Germans some time before they can actually get to the New World. We do have the French and the English here. Probably have to wait another 100 years before Germany gets here. So, like, what happened to Timmy? It's clearly been a while since I played EU4. This is like my favorite exploding Persian Empire. Oh, and Spain was able to integrate Naples. Yep, they weren't able to get out of their personal union. This is not looking good for France. Another hundred years into the future, and uh, damn. Okay, I can't help but be distracted by the Commonwealth. I mean, they're just so big and juicy. I don't even care what's going on with the other Western nations. Okay, what happened? It, clearly Lithuania grabbed Poland and then they moved towards the north, eating up Muscovy lands, somewhat. Their only real threat are the Ottomans and uh, that's kind of about it. I mean, no one else is really gonna cause any issues. Also, what is going on with Spain's flag? Is this new? I don't think it has anything to do with religion, but this is actually the perfect time, 1600s, to uh, kind of look at this map mode. There's a lot of reform territories popping up. The HRE still somehow survives, uh, and Austria is also still the emperor. Well, okay. I've also just noticed that, you know, the Mamluks are probably a big problem for the Ottomans as well. Uh, they haven't really moved too far to the south, surprisingly. I, I think they're having issues. As for colonization, yes, it looks like we are going to see a Spanish Brazil, at least at some point, and uh, the French are actually getting most of the northern part of this continent. Don't get your hopes up. I, I thought for a second this was our, our beautiful gray blob. Nope, it's Norway. I, I don't know how they got their independence. That's what really threw me off. Damn it. I didn't think about this either, but with a strong commonwealth, uh, the orthodox religion might just be maybe killed off. Because Muscovy, I just can't see them surviving. Of course, that also depends on how well the Ottomans do, uh, because there's a little spot of Orthodox here too. 
So who knows? But one faith that is just definitely not gonna end anytime soon is uh, is the people that love feet. Mm-mm-mm. They just love sucking on toes. Which, true story, I feel like since we're on this subject, I should probably bring it up. I've had way too many people out there ask me for feet pics. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? I feel like we've got a lot of activity in North America. Got the Caribbean colonized by Spain, uh, Portugal's in Florida, uh, British, Mexico, not doing too good, and uh, California out in the West. I think the Portuguese are just gonna give up on colonization, at least in this game. They're not even in South America. It's just gonna be France and Spain competing. Oh, I'm dumb. This would be the reason why. What the hell is Tunis? How did Tunis get over here? Also, what, is, okay, and then they're dealing with rebels at the same time? I, I just feel bad. Damn, and they've even already converted a few of these provinces to Sunni. So they've clearly been here for a while. They had to have done that with the help of the Ottomans, right? There's no other way. I, I don't see how this was possible. I guess I should also mention how strange it is that uh, England still doesn't have this under control yet. Both Wales and... Can, we, can I just say Scotland? Okay, this might be a first ever. I have never seen Korea take Japanese mainland. God damn, those tables have turned, haven't they? We've now made it into the 1700s, and uh, once again, it's it's just the Commonwealth basically overshadowing everyone else. Now this is what I was talking about, and not only do we have a weaker Norway taking back Iceland, that's kind of nice, but also a German Greenland and a German Canada as well. I wonder what that would even be like. So I'm assuming this new Germanic Canada should very easily be able to eat up lands from Vinland, since, as I said, Norway is not looking good at all. I don't think they'll last very long. And we also have New Germany that is formed in northern Florida, Georgia, and uh, South Carolina. Portugal is just now taking their territory back, which is kind of unfortunate. I, I would have loved to have seen Tunis right here in Iberia, but either way, the damage has been done. Clearly, they just didn't colonize at all in this game. I think we all knew this was the ultimate destiny for this continent. I mean, Spain got to Brazil fairly fast and uh, obviously got everything to the south. And France got to Venezuela and just ate up territory from there. Pacifico Norte. I like that name. It's different. Uh, they also still have California out here, which uh, I guess has been struggling from Ming Colombia. Okay, I... I think we all have so many questions right now. First of all, let's let's get the obvious one out of the way. H how the fuck did China get down here? I I don't know. And second, did they realize this is nothing like Colombia? Wait a sec. Okay, Colombia, cocaine, opium. <gasps> this is clearly just a drug colony. Ming, by the way, is still probably number one in, in the world right now. Still very strong with all these uh, tributary states. Also, they might just ruin the greatest Korea of all time. Man, that is depressing. But they did have Japan under their control too, so it makes sense. Oh man, this is continuing to get so good. The US has formed. The US has formed somehow. But I, I was wondering, you know, clearly the British are investing most in Mexico. And clearly it, it must have been someone weak because they already have their independence and they're not a very big colony. And I'll confirm, it was someone from the British Isles. Which means, yep. We have United States with Highlander culture. Scotland got here. It's kind of a miracle in and of itself that they survived this whole time. But then from there to go to North America and create the US. What are the chances? Oh, this is why Portugal got their country back. They're Muslim now. Man, there's just so much weird shit that's happened in this game. I think clearly the Ottomans had a very kind of... Not a bad game, per se, but not as good as they usually do, just because of the other two powers, the Mamluks and Persia. That kind of kept things really balanced in the Middle East. Anyways, let's finish off this campaign by going another 100 years into the future. We'll have to see if any colonies get their independence, or if there's any nations that just kind of collapse right at the finish line. Well, from the looks of it, there are no great powers that have crumbled. A lot of minor places, though. Norway is no longer in Scandinavia. And uh, finally, the English have formed Great Britain. The HRE, which I, I thought was kind of pointless in this game, ended up surviving till the very end. Uh, I, I don't think that matters. But yeah, Germany just went straight towards the north. Ming continues to be super powerful, but I will never forgive them for what they did to Korea. My baby Korea, they kicked him out of Japan. 
But uh, at least the Japanese got their independence, I guess. Shockingly, it was Germany that had the most imperialism in Africa. And if we were to go into the future a little bit more, oh yeah, they might be able to take a good portion of this continent. It's unfortunate to see the Mamluks in this state. Um, I had no idea until right now how much of a colonial beast they were. Not only did they get a big portion of Indonesia and uh, a part of Australia, but they completely colonized New Zealand. All of it. I guess it makes sense when you consider they are Egyptian, so they've been using their alien technology they got a couple thousand years ago. I guess none of the New World colonies got their independence. At least there's no like big example of it. Either way, I just wanted to have a video like this because I wanted to see a German colonial empire. And uh, that was clearly the case here. Here's one last look at the religious map mode, which on the surface, things don't look that crazy. The Western Hemisphere is all Catholic, not insane, but you know, there's small pockets like Ming with uh, Confucianism down here, as well as a Sunni Portugal. That's fantastic. And of course, as I said, with the Mamluks colonizing, we also have a Sunni New Zealand. And actually parts of Australia as well. And here it is. Here is the great power rankings. Who is the best in the world? We've got Delhi, the Mamluks, and the Ottomans. Commonwealth, France, and Spain in 5th, 4th, and 3rd. And finally, uh, I can't believe it, Ming and Germany. How in the hell did Germany get this top spot? Is it close? I mean, kind of. That, that doesn't make any sense to me, but that's perfect. I'll take it. I'm so glad this video wasn't an epic fail. I was, I was worried there, but Germany had a lot of epic style in this video. It, it was epic. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. A big thanks to Furry Cruz, Daddy Seabean, Mr. Fister, Eat God McNeck Ass, Jens Love Disc, Tanner of the Nazareth, Thick Dick Girl Breakson, Drew's Crack Baby, King Solomon, Kiwi Supreme, Dr. Freaky, Franco is Thick, Maxi G, Swiss Argo, Sean Spillman, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Bruce Vacation, Elijah Senpai, Raging Fruit, Delta Aurora, Kirby, and Elfie C.